Hello everyone, welcome to my piece for Drain Online 2021. I'm really glad you could join us. Sadly, it's in a completely different setting than what we've hoped for. Instead of a hall where we can actually see each other, talk to each other, cross swords, we get to share ideas and thoughts over video, which is still lovely because we actually get to meet up and share our experiences. But I would really, really have loved to actually meet up in person and I'm very much looking forward to it. I hope all of you are safe and sound and will stay healthy so we can actually fight together again in the future. This is about take, I think, 158 because it has been horribly difficult to actually convey all the information that I want to and be all right with how it went. So for now. Um, my piece will be about the early German longsword and specifically my approach to moving with it. I've titled it Defense is the best form of attack because I think that as long as you're safe you can continue moving. My idea to fight is start moving, continue moving until the very fight is finished. Between, focus on how you're standing, how you're moving and what you're about to do. This leaves room to observe what is actually happening. Because one of the most important lessons I learned over the past years is we can only control this, this bit, us, our body. We cannot control our opponents and we can definitely not decide the outcome of every given situation. So, there we have it. I'll talk about the early German long sword sources and my idea, my current view, of how we can use the information present, presented in there to create a simple system of movements and actions that we can chain together to make fighting a little bit less difficult. If you've ever been to a workshop of mine or we've talked about longsword, then you probably know by now that I'm really, really fond of the word structure. I like to have a very structured approach to the way I move and I'm very happy and very willing to make things incredibly difficult for myself in order to get a really simple outcome. To be a little bit less theoretical and vague, I'm willing to spend a lot of energy and attention on how to stand and how to step in order to achieve a consistent result. Basically, um, what I want to talk to you about today is goal number one safety, and goal number two, threat. If we take a look at the early German sources, then they clearly say why to move, when to move, but not very specifically how. And this is the thing that I've become pretty obsessed about. I want to know every single detail. I want to know where to step, how to stand, which muscles to tense and to relax on what, which particular moment and where the blade is moving from and to, in order to make sure that all my moves are as consistent as possible. Over the years I've come to figure out how to invest in what I now like to call basic tension. Make sure you tighten your core and bend your legs slightly in order to make this a stable structure to move. Therefore, all actions, whether it's offensive or defensive, are based around body rotation and hand positioning. I can go high and low and I can extend or gather. So as long as I keep this basic tension proper, it means that I do not lose any energy. I will need to invest a certain amount of attention and energy into gaining this position and retaining it throughout the fight. But I do not have to think on regaining uh, on but I do not have to think on regaining balance because if I'm about to move, I know where I will probably end up. And this is a concept that can be used a bit more broadly. 
if you know the particular properties and requirements of a move and you can predict the outcome, then all you need to do is observe and figure out if that outcome is actually happening or not. One of the most simple examples I can give you is a simple step. If I would invest in a basic tension where my knees are bent, core is engaged, I'm standing upright, then a simple step forward should result in me ending up closer to danger without falling over. If I manage to step and trip, then apparently the predicted result is not happening and I should change my tactic. Although the tactics involving in a step are not that complicated, this also applies to much more complicated situations. If you can focus on the move you are doing now while observing what is happening, this gives you much more freedom. This has led me to experience time much more relaxed during a fight. It literally feels like you have more time at your hands. So rather than focusing on moving the speediest I could, the fastest, I focused on being the quickest, figuring out which route was the most effective and the most efficient and weighing those against the investment required for speed and strength. So if I would step forward, then being able to step forward without losing balance is priority number one. Safety. If I would fall over, this would be less safe. So if that one is successful, then I can focus on goal number two, threat. If this step brings me closer to my opponent, this allows me to create a threat. Therefore, it is part of the entire setup to actually attack the opponent. Although this is the simple example of just a step, as long as I'm able to do this consistently, life is pretty okay. If I do not know the exact length of my ideal step, how the hell am I going to pull it off consistently? So here comes another important principle. Aim for perfection, accept mediocrity. Because if your step is bound to be perfect, you mess up and you end up with a mediocre step that still takes you forward and does not make you lose your balance, everything is still all right. Life's not that bad. Could be much worse. Same goes for strikes and thrusts. If we take this concept and apply it to the actions that we can do with the sword, for now I'll stick to striking and thrusting, whereas striking is defined as any given movement in which the tip moves more than the hands and any thrust will be any movement in which the hands move more than the tip. If we take a look at those particular actions during the fight, then if I'm able to pursue just the one technique that I'm doing currently, if I'm then able to pursue just the technique that I'm doing at this particular moment, I do not need to worry five steps ahead. All I need to do is focus all my attention on not falling over, holding on to my sword and finish the action I'm actually doing. Because this is enough to occupy my cognitive brain. This is enough to occupy my brain. I do not want to worry about all the 20 different options that could have a horrible ending. I want to focus on what I'm doing at this particular moment and then, once everything is in place and everything is actually moving, I want to spend the rest of my attention to observe what the opponent is doing, what I'm experiencing. For instance, is the distance becoming shorter or is there any pressure on my blade? So, the general approach to try to sum it up in a more simple way is move, spend your attention on making that particular move and finishing it until it has fulfilled its function. Meaning, if it is keeping you safe and therefore progressing you through the fight, it is successful. If it's keeping you safe, then you can actually go back to that second goal of trying to pose a threat towards the opponent. Because the end result is we don't want to keep moving indefinitely. We want to make sure that after our initial move, the fight ends as soon as possible. But sadly, 
we cannot control the outcome. The only thing we can do is pick and choose which action we can perform and do it. Therefore, we should know the property and requirement of that particular action. For me, in the case of overall, that would be safe, relatively safe, then look at the options of posing the threat. Safety in this particular matter will be defined as having my blade spend a lot of time in front of me, in between the space that you, in between me and the opponent, in the space that we share. For now, I'll call this the central space between me and the opponent. What I want to do with this movement is make sure that my blade gets there as soon as possible, because I want to protect my most vital organs, central nervous system, therefore head and spine, because if one of those fails, the fight is probably over. At least I'm not very happy with the result. Therefore, if someone hits you in the face with a piece of steel, either get the hell out or take your own piece of steel and place it in between. The thing that we... Uh, when I uh, said it simply like that, it brings to mind to talk about uh, bury and repost scenarios. My aim is to make sure that you have proactive actions to progress you through the fight towards a winning, therefore not losing and surviving, situation. Barrier post, in my opinion, is the end result of a perfectly aimed counterattack and a mediocre outcome of keeping you safe. Therefore, you have to spend the next action actually threatening the opponent. So my aim is to either counterattack when not having the initiative or proactively engage when I have the initiative. During the proactive engagement, the main focus will be to occupy the central space, not to actually hit the opponent. One of the things that I found um, different in my approach to a lot of people's approaches in the last couple of years has been the particular goal, so one of the properties, of a strike or thrust. My idea is that a strike or thrust is there to get you into a better situation. This might also lead to the situation in which your blade makes contact with the opponent, calling that hitting the opponent. Call that hitting the opponent. It doesn't matter as much. I don't want to get hit. If I have to hit someone in the meantime to ensure that, that has to happen. Sadly so. But I'm not focusing on actually trying to hit specific targets. What I want to do is move the most effectively and the most efficiently and not hit whatever the opponent is doing. I can't control their bodies. I can't control their body. Therefore, I don't know exactly where their targets are going to end up in. I don't want to spend calculation. I don't want to spend processing power on trying to figure out where something is currently, where it's probably going to end up, therefore predicting a pattern, and then figuring out how long it's going to take to go from place A to place B. That's a lot of processing power. I want to be occupied with where is my sword currently, where do I want it to end up, and how the hell do I get to safety as soon as possible. To make sure this becomes a bit more clear, I'll grab a sword now. The first example I'm going to give you is Overhaal from Fontach. I'll invest in basic tension, rotate my body and keep the sword with me and then move to safety as soon as possible. The first part is making sure that my blade occupies the space between me and the opponent as long as possible. I want to stretch out that moment intensely. I am moving from the right side to the left side relatively by rotating the upper body. In doing so, the tip travels and presents a threat, meaning that if I focus on getting to this safe, strong position first, 
I can then spend the rest of the entire movement to figure out what the hell is going on in this encounter with the other person. So, invest in the basic tension, rotate, strike, and from here on out, just observe and relax. Because it really doesn't matter what is actually going on as long as I focus on this particular move. Whilst striking, I can figure out if a blade is opposing my blade and therefore I need to initiate the next move, or if I'm actually successfully hitting the opponent and therefore focus on finishing this particular move, or if the opponent is moving away and I need to focus on finishing this particular move to make sure that the point travels in front of their body, still occupying the central space as long as I possibly can. If I were to thrust from Flug, for instance, then rotating and moving the sword forward will give me a safe position from where I can extend into a long point position or continue all the way to left lower hanging for Absetzen, for instance. This particularly applies to winding. If I've encountered a sword, next step is gather, hinge up and extend. Because in this way, the last bit of the movement will be extending into the upper hanging, where we want to go, interrupting the blade coming in from that particular angle. So taking these three steps instead of a mere sweep with extended arms will be slightly less quick. It's going to take a little bit more time. It's investing more energy. The upside is that it is much more effective because during this wind, I maintain pressure and threat, maintain safety because I do not take the strong nor the point away from the central space, then move into the next position, still supported by my structure, and then move to interrupt the incoming attack with everything I have. Therefore, if I know these properties and know the requirements, then it's easy to continue to move like this all throughout the fight. If I want to make a strong overhaul, I need to rotate. Therefore, if I would start squared, there is no rotation left and my overhaul cannot be as powerful as I want it to be. Therefore, I need to invest in rotation, then move the blade up. So if we know how to move and if we know what every particular move brings us, then the only thing left is to chain them all together. Preferably not in a completely random fashion, but as long as you try to reoccupy the space in front of you, bring the strong in front of you, then pursue the threat with the point. Basically, you are trying to get yourself to safety and you're probably progressing successfully through the fight because either you are successfully hitting the opponent or if they're moving away, you can bring your point online. If not, you can still spend your attention on not falling over and standing as strong as possible using body rotation to finish the action and create a threat and pressure. If the blade gets interrupted and our opponents push us to the side, that's great. It means they're occupied with our sword, not with us. So from that moment on, we can start initiating the next action and create the next safest, strongest position possible. We strive for them to be perfect and we completely accept them to be mediocre as long as they protect us and then allow us to create our next possible threat towards the opponent. If one of these techniques is finished, we start the next. When is the technique finished? When it has gone to completion and we can then transition into the next one. Or if it gets interrupted, but it has fulfilled its purpose and therefore we can shift to the next one because it's the most obvious choice. It's the best thing to do. The question I want to ask you today is, what is the purpose of existence of your particular strike and thrust? Are you happy with those? Do you know its qualities? Do you know what it takes to make them successful? As in, 
Do you know exactly where to place your foot, how to rotate your body, where to move your hands in order to go to safety as soon as possible? Because the more time and attention we spend on moving well ourselves, the more time we have left over in the fight to look at our opponents, to observe and to relax. The best thing to do, I think, is pick a move, do it. Keep doing it until it is either completely done and you can transition or your opponent is giving you a clear reason to stop pursuing this particular action and start the next. Because in this way, you only need to predict one result. It really doesn't matter what the particular action is you're doing as long as you dedicate yourself to it and commit to it. Make sure you start moving and don't stop moving until the fairy fight is finished. The moment you encounter a blade, your overhaul is done. And this is the ideal situation to start the next move. Therefore, push off with the foot, rotate, reorientate your hands and reoccupy the center space. So, to conclude, try to figure out what the properties and requirements of your particular actions are. Because if you can fully trust in them, if you know what they give you, then it's going to be much easier to commit to them. Try to worry constantly about moving consistently. Therefore, stand strong, rotate your body and orientate your hands. Although this might look a bit unnatural at first, or feel uncomfortable, at the very least this will give you consistency. This brings me to the end of what I wanted to share with you today. Dig deep into what the properties are of your actions, whether it is strike, thrust, wind or simply step. If you know what it gives you then it's going to be much easier to commit to it. It takes away doubt and decision mid-fight and keep things simple. All right. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope you'll stay healthy and we get to see each other soon because I'm really, really done with this situation. I'll try to make the most of it and train at home as much as I can, figure out where to move from here. But I'm going to be really glad when this is over and we finally get to cross swords again and see each other in real life. Thank you. Stay safe.